we're the best team of a group of yeah. champions every year. With Coach K at the helm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry about the start off. Only and one. Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode one of the Better Blue Podcast. I'm Ryan Kelly. This is my man, James Michael McAdoo. What are we doing here, man? What's up, brother? Don't What's up? Know? Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode one. Like my brother Ryan said, we're here picking up kind of where we left off. Just, you know, wanting to let y'all know this podcast is going to be all things UNC Duke basketball, as well as, you know, other things involving the game of basketball from the NBA to what's going on in the recruiting world with our perspective, you know, respective schools. And if you didn't get a chance, go back, listen to episode zero, check it out, YouTube. We're on all platforms. Subscribe, give us a like, hit us. We're going to have a mailbag set up, but we kind of ran through basically, you know, why are we sitting on a couch here in Japan? Um, <laughs> More or less, we're playing professional basketball over here. Been playing together for the last, just our third season together. Um, and, you know, obviously we just wanted to have a chance to talk about everything we love. So we started the Better Blue Pod. And, you know, this has been crazy getting everything put together. But, you know, we're finally here. And we're looking forward to just putting out a ton of content. And we talked about it in the first episode. What a time to start a podcast around college basketball but more so UNC basketball <laughs> and yeah. that's and that school down the road yeah definitely a lot of shifting landscape we, you know everything from the NAL how that's changing the game of basketball college basketball pro basketball um the one and dones whether that's going to be kind of shifting away yeah. and, and changing recruiting so lots to talk about um but today in our episode one we wanted to first of all hit some notes on um the preseason uh for both Duke and Carolina yeah. The preseason games, little exhibition games, blue-white scrimmage. Um, we're going to run right into a little bit of a non-conference schedule breakdown. Yeah. Um, just talk about how we think the season's going to start for both both teams. Uh, and then hit, uh, I will call it, some NBA stories, some yeah. experience stories for us. Not necessarily Duke and Carolina related, but you know we've, we've gone through quite a bit in our careers. So uh, some cool things to talk about um, looking forward. So... Um, hopefully we've got some good stuff for you guys today. Um, we're going to start off. Max going to hit the um, his notes from the blue white yeah. scrimmage. So get into it. Let's go. I gotta say it's great to be back, man. Talking about college <laughs> basketball, I just I'm excited. I obviously have a lot more reasons to be excited than you. Um, <laughs> but come on, and I just I'm just looking forward to this journey, and I'm just excited for this ride. So yeah, we're gonna talk about the intra squad scrimmage that we saw the. Has it always been called the blue white scrimmage? Yeah, countdown Ter to craziness. Blue white name. scrimmage. That's a awful name. Yeah. Oh come on. Um, and then we'll talk on um, you guys' first loss of the year against Houston. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> not much. There's no no you video of that. You know, There's no proof. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Um, I don't know if anybody got a chance to see the to see the scrimmage live or like myself. I got to see you know some of the clips. Um, online, which was very difficult because there was no audio. So getting to understand and know who this team is is extremely difficult. You know, even as a Carolina fan, I know, you know, obviously being a Duke fan, you have a better feel for, like, who these guys are. But, you know, you guys have a completely new roster. I mean. Yeah, I mean, the only guy that really played yeah, was Roach. Roach. I mean, from, right. from last year. And he played a huge role. Yep. You especially know, late. Yep. Especially late. Um in the game, he played solid. One thing that I thought was interesting, he shot three for three from the three-point line. I noted that he was a 32% shooter from deep last year, which is something that he might not, you know, have been asked to do last year as much as he might have to this year, just with so much, you know, shifting uh, lineups and new guys, and he has to really be that, that anchor. Um, we talked about this off camera. It was awesome to see that young kid, Proctor, the Australian kid. I got, you know, I'm a fan. You know, I'm a fan of his game. I think he plays um, a lot older than an 18-year-old. I think he knows, he understands that he's not going to be asked to do a ton. But, you know, in terms of the system, I think he went to a great system, I got to say. 
you know, you guys are going to get up and down and give him a lot of freedom. I think he showed that in his scrimmage, some of his decision making. I think that's going to be the biggest key for him is just, you know, you know, understanding he's has so much talent around him, you know, and knowing when to choose his times to attack. That tends to be an issue, not sure. an issue, but like a, a learning curve yeah. where there's just so much talent and youth and figuring out, how, you know, when am I getting mine? And I think in the past, obviously, Coach K did a great job of getting people to, even freshmen, to buy into their sure. role. Um, sure. But that's a new coach, yeah. Coach Shire. He's got to, John's got to figure out, yeah. you know, how do we get people to buy in? But I do like Proctor a lot. Yeah. His, he plays with his head up. He's unselfish, but attacks the rim, has a nice-looking stroke. That we'll yeah. see if he can knock down shots because, I, I, like we talked about, I think the shooting could be a potential issue yeah, for Duke, be. which it's been yeah. the last few years. A part of an unbelievable recruiting class also. <laughs> you know, we didn't get to see Lively, you know, who is the number one player in the class of 2022. I think he was out with a calf strain. We didn't get to see Whitehead, who um, had surgery, on his foot, Broken which is foot. a little, it's a little, you know, concerning, you know. Um, I doubt you'll see him before. I don't. I don't think you'll see him in the month of November. Um, well, I'm not did, a doctor. He, <laughs> Let me preface that. He did drop like I think it was on Instagram. I saw he dropped like one of those, you know, ball emojis. Right. Like he's yeah. like he's on his way back. I mean, not to. What's the rush though? Yeah, I and hope, I would say know, I, I would say yeah. that especially John as a new coach with yeah. kind of a changing program yeah. you want to show yeah. these guys that we're taking yeah. care of you um I mean I myself had yeah, you two broken that. feet and yeah. um at Duke and d foot injuries have been yeah they're relatively as far yeah. as injuries go common at Duke um yeah. so I would assume they're going to take him slow and they've yeah. been taking him slow the injuries yeah. already but I mean, he's he's got to be back for Duke to be in yeah. a good situation. I, mean, she, I hate to say it, not the best timing for the team. I yeah. mean, as an athlete, you never want to get hurt. But in terms of, you know, trying to get some cohesiveness with an entire, you know, new group. I'm talking grad transfers. You're talking four or five, six freshmen coming in. You know, no matter how highly ranked these kids are, they're getting ready to go up against, you know, grown men. And we'll talk about that. You know, when we talk about the Carolina team, just how much older these guys are than, you know, a majority of your team. Um, yeah, I think guys are coming in more prepared in terms sure. of they've for sure. they've trained. and, for sure. and, and But the level, every yeah. level you go up, the athleticism yeah. goes up, the speed yeah. goes up. You have to yeah. get used to that. The physicality, especially, yeah. of college basketball yeah. is nothing like high school or AU. Yeah. Um, which I learned very well my freshman year <laughs> yeah, when I, I like, couldn't wait, play. Yeah. <laughs> when I, when I, I know for a fact I did not meet our strength and conditioning coach on any of my visits. I got there, we got well acquainted very quickly, and I was like, "Oh, we we lived here yeah. before, after, maybe sometimes during the game." I feel like, yeah, I think I got I my eyes were widened when they saw oh, my man. body, and then when I left, yeah. they were probably still like, "Oh, we, <laughs> we we did what we could." <laughs> yeah. Um, but another, yeah, another surprise from the intra squad scrimmage was, I mean, maybe a small note here was the kid Reeves, who was a three star and really probably supposed to redshirt. And I saw Shire came out, and they still are undecided on what they were going to do with him. Uh, he's a hometown kid, and honestly, he's the one that stood out the most to me from the from the just watching the film. Athlete, you know, running up and down, rim protector, you know, basically just plays his played his role, you know, which is somebody you need. I don't know how much minutes he will see if he doesn't redshirt. You know, he's coming in. He's a three-star. He's coming in behind two five-stars, big men in Lively and uh, Filipowski. Um, Clearly, he's raw. I mean, for sure. T yeah. at that size yeah. and that athleticism, yeah. I think he went to Oak Hill. Um, yeah. You know, that that probably means that people see it's it's potential. It's not there yeah. yet. In the blue rights scrimmage, his athleticism showed yeah. – um, I don't know if he'll redshirt yeah. or not, but I, I see him as somebody that's in the future going to help a, a Duke team for Definitely. sure. Um, so that's yeah, that's a good sign for the future at least. Yeah, and then again, moving on, you guys played in a closed door scrimmage against Houston, who is good. You, you reminded me there preseason number three this year. Um, you lost by ten points. Obviously, this is all nothing was recorded. 
Um, we do know that Lively again and Whitehead did not play. Um, but I'm guessing some highlights will be dropped you sometime think? first yeah. week in November, where yeah. each program will yeah. drop their highlights. I I would venture to guess. Was that common for y'all to do preseason scrimmages behind closed doors? Because we, we did, did not have a closed door really? scrimmage. Okay. We did. We had a couple exhibition games. Yeah. Um, we always played against. I think it was the D three national championship er, national champion every year. We like tried to schedule them to yeah. have a t- you know a tough yeah. opponent, but it was. You know, yeah. not quite at our level. We would we would do the same thing. Yeah. Not uh, not D three. Sorry, we would have closed door scrimmages. I, off the top of my head, I think we played. We went up to Georgetown one time. I think we had. I can't remember. I think we went to Memphis one time. Yeah, because Leslie McDonald was from Memphis. Shout out to Les. <laughs> he was from Memphis. We went there. Um, I remember he didn't even end up playing. So we were like, "Why are we here? If he's not even <laughs> playing." <laughs> But the barbecue was good. I do remember that. <laughs> Historically, Duke, uh, we have not gone anywhere in okay. the uh, in the. Yeah, which is fine. Even the preseason, like out of yeah, conference, yeah, yeah. we For either sure. go to yeah. big venues or yeah. play at home. Right. I mean, yeah. it's either looking at the tournament and yeah. saying this is the type of arena we're playing in the tournament, yeah, or we're playing at home. Roach played solid in the game. Ten points. I mean, I. I've, I don't even like talking about this because it's obviously it's just a closed door scrimmage. We don't know how if they were even like able to get up and down. It says Mark Mitchell had a good game, twelve points. Um, he's another one of your highly touted freshmen that is going to probably for majority of the season might fly under the radar or might not. You know, depends on do we see him. You know, finding a way into the starting lineup if Whitehead can't go. Will you guys maybe go with um, the older, j- older Jalen Blakes, who I think is sophomore? A sophomore, <laughs> you know, um, these are all just so many questions that you know. I'm not even a Duke fan, and I'm like, who are we about to see? You know, soon. You know, you guys are getting ready to tip off against Kansas by the time this pod, you know, drops. You know, probably within a week. Um, like I said, the season is here, and also, like, what is your identity? You know, is Shire just, you know. Carrying on the tradition, of Coach K, you know, I, I know for a fact watching Carolina play, Hubert made some big changes um, to the offense primarily, you know, and just giving those guys a lot more um, just different looks, you know, than, than they had under, you know, Roy for so long. So a lot of questions. Definitely. And how deep does the bench go? How deep? You know, yeah. obviously it's it, the easy comparison is always going to be with Coach K. Yeah. And generally when – you know, things got tighter. Coach K's bench got pretty short. You yeah. know, he would play seven guys, yeah. maybe, yeah. which isn't a bad thing. It's no. just that's how he, yeah. you know, with, with college basketball, when you look back on it at the time, I mean, you are playing so hard. You are. But you're getting a timeout every four minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> he played 40-minute games. Yeah. Like, but he's, yeah. You're stopping, different. you know, a lot. Um, so... But how deep they go? Does the kid Ryan Young play at all? Like I doubt it. Maybe not, but yeah. I don't know. That's going to be yeah. a question mark. Do they yes. go eight nine? I'm sure early. Obviously, in They'll those early to. games, yeah. you're gonna. But when they play Kansas, yeah, that gives you a little insight into what John really thinks yeah. of the roster and how deep he really wants to go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of question marks for sure. My biggest one is on John. I just. I'm really intrigued just to see, you know, how he handles. I mean, he has – obviously, you can speak on this. Coach K was such a great communicator, such a great leader. Team builder. Team builder. We watched the Redeem documentary, how they brought him in, and he was able to get those guys to buy in. It's – it's. I just – I hope he's ready. I hope he's ready. Obviously – Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, having – Played for Coach K, coached with Coach K. He's going to have taken the things that he thinks are important and valuable and then has to put his own spin on what he's doing the program. With the program, I mean, step one in college athletics is in college basketball is recruiting. For sure. And he's doing that. Like that seamless transition where you're getting number one, number two ranked classes the next couple years. And then, yes, what does a coach do at the yeah. end of a close game? How does yeah. he – does the offense look different? You know, Coach K was pretty f- 
talent forward with his offense. He let sure. his talent play. Let's go. Um, which, I mean, with the youth, you almost have to. There's yeah, only so much yeah, time you can imprint, you know. I just worry that things are going to go bad for y'all early. Okay. I just worry for you. No, you I are just not. Worry for Duke that's a Clinton. wrong choice of term. I just worry for y'all. Uh, you're worried. Good yeah, you're we, real worried. We, I just worry. <laughs> I honestly just worry that things are gonna go bad, and he doesn't have the, you know, he just doesn't have. I mean, he's first year head coach. I just, I don't know. Well, the thing about being number one is anything that isn't a solid win for is sure. going things going bad for sure. So you for sure. We obviously both have a ton of pressure. Experience sure. being at Duke and Carolina, sure. you're always under extreme yeah. pressure. Um, but, yeah. hey, you're number one. Yeah. We're not number one. We got up to go. All you got to go is down. <laughs> um, true. Talk you got us. any more notes? No, nah, That's good? good All right. All right, let me hit my notes here. UNC, I'm, we're not going to talk about the blue-white yeah, because no we're past that. Yeah, uh, that was a couple weeks ago now. Um, they had a – and by the way, Duke, by the time this comes out, Duke will have played an You're exhibition right. game yeah, yeah. Um, that, that we're that. not going to yeah. be able to talk about. Um, but you can only take so much from sure. these preseason stuff anyway. Um, so UNC took on Johnson C. Smith, um, which, you know, it was a completely outmatched. Them boys look good. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think it was there was the talent disparity sure. was very clear. Um Similar to Duke, a little yeah. bit of a bummer to not be able to see R.J. Davis, yeah. Justin, McCoy, Justin McCoy, Puff Johnson, yeah. uh, Jalen Washington. Yeah, a yeah, bunch of freshmen, but uh, uh, Jalen Washington freshman. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to play, but I, yeah. R.J. Davis, obviously a big part of your team, Huge. and I, I would say, yeah. one of either Puff Johnson or Justin McCoy is an important yep. role. I think yep. as we've talked about. You felt McCoy was going to. Yeah, I thought he would have had a better year last year just in having an opportunity to work out and train with him during the summer. But, you know, coming from UVA, there was obviously some, you know, a learning curve there. I think he dealt with a little few nagging injuries through the year. So I'm expecting a big role from him coming off the bench this year. From a UNC fan perspective, which I'm decidedly not, right. I would be um, excited – that both Baycott and Love were clearly ready yeah, to play they, in that yeah, game. I they mean, picked up where they left off. Yeah, they were boom, yeah. boom, boom. I mean, Baycott immediately yeah. affects the boards. He I mean, is especially going to shatter <laughs> so many records. Rebounding records. He had 20 oh, boards. Oh, my gracious. They dominated the boards. Again, I'll keep saying this a clearly lesser for opponent sure, sure, whose sure. size was, right. they were tiny and yeah. they tried zone. Yeah. Um, there was nothing they could do. And the, the board totals were 59 to 25. Yeah. I mean, um, but I do think Baycott alone gives you guys yeah. a rebounding advantage basically against yeah. every opponent you play. Yeah. Um, and that's such like, it's Huge. almost unselfish how he gets under people and yeah. beneath people to push him out and get the yeah. board. I mean, he's... Six double-doubles in the NCAA tournament yeah. last year. That was a record. I just think... He's going to – That's and rebounding in college basketball is huge. Yeah. Rebounding at Carolina is what, you know, Roy used to hang his hat on, you know, being able to get multiple, you know, possessions. The Carolina back tap is, you know, it's in the basketball dictionary. <laughs> I don't know that dictionary. <laughs> I haven't read that part of it. But, but you know, it's just he's going to be the anchor. You know, you saw it last year all the way up into the national championship game. You know, the, the just the way he's able to impact the game without even really having to have a play drawn up for him clear, just by dominating the boards. And I loved, like you said, you know, lesser opponent. Obviously, you would have liked to have seen maybe the defense, you know, tightened up a little bit more. But it's, when you're getting up and down and you're playing against a team that's nowhere near your talent level, it's kind of hard to, you know, really be locked in for 40 minutes on the defensive end. I just thought it was great to see Pete Nance for the first time. I don't know what your thoughts are on him. I think that was a huge question mark on, you know, his role. Obviously, Manic left the season that he had last year. This kid can play. I like Nance a lot. This kid can play. I My one concern, and I played with Larry Nance with the yeah, Lakers. Uh, great dude and a great family. Yeah. Um, my concern with Nance is that 
he did shoot over 40% yeah. last year. Yeah, he did. But not at the he's not the shooter the manic. Nah. He is not a quick release. No, doesn't like yeah, yeah the manic and manic's confidence as yeah. the year went on rose Ridiculous. and rose and rose and was turned into a great yeah. shooter. I mean a great shooter. Uh but I do think that Nance is a little more versatile. He is. I mean, he can put the ball on the yep. floor a little bit. He's yeah. he can play with little touch floaters yeah. around the I basket. I like his length. Yeah. Um, and not if, that Manic couldn't do those things either. No, but, but his role was different. was yeah. different, yeah. and he was more as a spot up guy. Yeah. I like Manic was tall. He was very lean. I yeah. think Nance is a little more solid. Yeah, he He's a little upright the way yeah. he runs and stuff, yeah. but. I love his skill level. I think he's going to help you guys. I mean, obviously, he's going to help you guys. Yeah. Um, it'll just be the role of that four man yeah. will be a little bit different than it yeah. was. And Manic was huge for you guys. Yeah. I mean, down the he stretch, was he he was huge. Yeah. So um, I also liked how Caleb Love was playing again yeah. in that game. He was just unselfish. He I was. mean, he had, I think, what did I? Which might have had something to do with R.J. Davis being out. True, true. Know. But Hubert um, in the post game yeah. interview he said that was something he talked a lot with yep. Caleb yep. um on and I think that I don't want to say it was an issue last year because they went to the, you guys went to the national championship how many yeah. issues can you come up with but he was very quick to shoot very and quick. you guys needed that um but if you can take that explosive scoring ability and then create even better looks because he's a tough shot maker he's a tough shot maker um, and taker because he yeah. he his shooting percentage wasn't yeah. You know, he's yeah. not a 50% shooter. No, not. Um, so if he can take that, yeah. you know, teams being more aggressive to run him off the three-point line, things like that, and be able to create fielders, that helps your team, yeah. I mean, a ton. So, yeah, 23 assists on 39 field yeah. goals in that game. That's – you like that. Uh, the one other note I had, I just – I do wish Leaky Black yeah. had – shown some yeah. offensive improvement i think yeah. he's a great defender and i think he helps your team because he plays a role for sure but you also want that guy yeah you, you want that guy to be a three and d guy really i know yeah. they, the nba talks about that not as much in college yeah. but you want that guy to be able to be in the corner yeah and i mean last year when he played duke he scored some in the yeah. final regular season game and he yeah. showed like a little flash yeah. but I, I i did not see that yeah. in the preseason game particularly yeah. um I think he's going to have to prove that very early on. I think teams are going to just look at, you know, the presence of, you know, Armando in the middle, Pete Nance. You know, they're going to have R.J. Davis on the perimeter, Caleb Love, and they're going to be like, well, we got to just lay, you know, like they got to pick their poison. I think that's what you're going to have to see. He's going to have to very quickly show whether he has improved on that over the summer or hasn't. And um, I think it's just it's confidence, for right? For sure, he, he's, go, he's going to be open. Capable. Yeah, he's, he's, he's going to be it, open. Like you said last yeah. year, even in the NCAA tournament, he hit big shots. He's going to be so, open, so he's just got to shoot with confidence and, yeah. and knock him down and be ready to yeah. be ready for that because he's going yeah. to be open. Um, so yeah, that was my take. And then yeah. there was some talent there with the youth. Um, yeah, the Tyler Nickel kid who's a freshman. Yep, yeah, he um, looked good. Trimble, Dunn, Styles, yeah. but I don't see them necessarily cracking um, the. I think. ACC rotation. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Maybe I think, early. I think they'll surprise you, man. You think they're gonna think, go that deep? I don't know. If, I don't. I think they. I think. I don't know if they'll go that deep when it comes to the bigger games on the schedule. But I think just over the course of the year, trying to keep these guys fresh and give these guys an opportunity. And you know, we haven't really talked about this. You also gotta, you know, keep these guys invested. You know, because you could see a mass exodus from this team after they win the national championship. You know. Um, and you want to make sure these guys are, you know, ready, especially, um, I got high hopes for, for Trimble. You know, I got to play with his brother, JP Tokoto. I think you saw glimpses of his athleticism in the scrimmage. Yep. Um, and you know, the other thing is the the thing that Duke is dealing with, you hope that Carolina doesn't have to deal with is just injuries. So you want to make sure these guys are getting reps, game reps, um, if, you know, injuries are to happen, which is a huge part of just having as you can speak on, I can speak on, you know, having a successful season. You know, we were the same boat as this exact same team. We were number one seed my freshman year. Kendall Marshall went down, broke his wrist when we, you know, we didn't really have a backup point guard. You know, we had a we ended up having to move Justin Watch the point guard at that point to play point guard for a little bit. We had a kid named Stillman White, who, you know, for a majority of the year wasn't really getting that many reps, who ended up having to fill in. He was a freshman and that ended up really being our demise. 
Yeah, I think uh, coaches always say next man up, but yeah. uh, that's easier said than it's done. It's easier said than I done, mean, when, especially you know, like, with a guy like Kendall. I mean, yeah, he had an NBA on, career. Man. That's let that's, alone uh, at that at on that stage. You would hate in that this, position, in that point position. guard. Yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. it's that's tough. really tough. But that actually brings up a good point, though. The way the um, transfer portal is now, yeah, you also have to kind of you have you have to appease these guys yeah. at some level, or hope that they're bought yeah. into. Yeah. growth in the program yeah. because you can leave and and yeah. not sit out a year and i'm gone jump and, and which is an issue because there's guys that are probably still in the transfer portal that didn't get picked up anywhere That's but true. at a place like unc those guys yeah, if they're they recruited know. by unc they'll they'll find they a know. a soft landing spot so um you'd hope that they're bought into the program and you yeah. know but nobody not many players go in hoping they're there for four years they want to play for sure. and and no, have for dreams sure. and aspirations to play at yeah. the next level. So, yeah, um, I think that's that's my little preseason breakdown. Yeah. Good news for you guys is uh, Hubert did say that all your injuries that missed that yeah, game are all going to yeah. be there for game one. Yeah. Um, Duke a little more yeah. up in the air. Yeah. Um, I think Lively will make a return. Yeah. Um, but, you know, obviously Whitehead coming back from that foot injury, you got to – you know more than anyone, you got to just take your time. I mean, for sure he comes back this year. Barring, you know, a uh, huge setback. But uh, he'll be ready, man. I hope so. Yeah. Well, let's hit the schedule. Let's talk about uh, the schedule. We're going to go, I think, just the non-conference schedule. Yep. We're going to wait on the ACC. Yep, yep, yep. We're going to go through our each team's. Max going to go through Duke's non-conference schedule, see what record he comes out with. And I'll do the same for Carolina. Um yeah, so let's do it. Yeah, let me hear what you got to. You guys got to. <laughs> um, you know, obviously, you're always in that Champions Classic. You know, like we talked about, you guys open up at home against. Well, you got an exhibition, which I hope you guys can handle Fayetteville State. Um, but you open up on Monday, November seventh. You got Jacksonville, Easy W. You guys got USC Upstate, Easy W, and then your first real test. Which remind me, you didn't get to play in the champions. That wasn't around when you were playing. Correct? No, I played in it. You played in it. The, they yeah. had the champions class. Yeah, okay, that's okay. when it started during okay. my career. Because we beat Kentucky. I think I've maybe played twice. We beat Kentucky twice. my senior year. Okay. Um, so this year y'all have Kansas. Yeah, which is actually Duke's only losing record in the champions classic against Kansas. We're, okay. we're one and two against Kansas. But can I can I just quick pause, please? When the, the powers that be of the Champions Classic yeah. were starting, I think it was 2011 maybe yeah. is the first year. So maybe in 2010, they're like, let's come up with this, this awesome yeah. tournament of champions. Four teams. How deep down the list? Because they didn't just make a list of four teams. They were like, all Tell right. the people who's in the – so they know. In case somebody doesn't know. Who okay, it's Duke, right. Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan State. Yeah. At what number do you think Carolina came up on the champion? You know, were they like, oh, they're right outside. They're the fifth fifth team. We <laughs> we or was it like, oh, Carolina down there, like the ninth or tenth option? I'm pretty sure we declined. No, 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 no chance. And sending on down the road, like, get us the <laughs> no Duke man. They need to board it us. <laughs> no chance. No chance. I think you guys, you know, I maybe know how, man. maybe eighth or ninth. I mean, what other what other teams would there be? Well, we for sure. Come on, man! Don't dis disrespect. <laughs> is at an all time high here, people. So you think you're like five? You were you were just we, just outside. There's a story that we don't know, but we basically probably either declined. There's no way you declined for sure. No, why would you decline being in that? I don't know. Yeah, you, maybe Roy. They probably ain't got the golf courses. Roy was like, if I what, can't whatever go helps you sleep at night. Go. Whatever <laughs> helps you sleep at night. Um, all right, go ahead. Listen, yeah, go ahead. L Kansas, <laughs> oh, God. Duke taking the L. Of course, uh, uh -huh. yeah. I don't like that, but uh, I just ha I can't. I'm just there's so much unknown, man. I just have a hard time thinking. Obviously, you know, planning those games and you see it. The big time players show up. They show up in those games. You've seen it from Paolo. You've seen it from. You guys have had so many big time one and done guys that have Barrett Zion. They, just, they all just Jason yeah. Tatum. Those games they show up. I just. I just don't – I don't think Whitehead is going to be able to play in that game. And I don't think Lively is – like, he's a big man. I don't think he's going to have that big of an effect on that game. 
Um, but we'll see. Um, but I got y'all taking that L. With all due respect, I apologize, man. <laughs> yeah, you got tons of respect, I'm sure. And then you guys get to come on home, get some home cooking. Delaware, easy win. Bellarmine, where do y'all find these schools at, bro? No disrespect. <laughs> don't to disrespect. No Beller, disrespect. Bellarmine. Bellarmine. My bad. <laughs> no disrespect to any of Bellarmine. our followers for Bellarmine. <laughs> but y'all are y'all are gonna get your check and go on home with an L. Uh, then you guys are out in the Phil Knight Legacy, which we talked about. It's kind of cool because Carolina is also in a uh, Phil Knight Invitational, which we'll talk about later. But at the basically the exact same time, you guys are going to get your you get a win against Oregon State. Then you go on to play the winner of Florida Xavier. I think you know you guys will win um, the winner of that. Can't tell you who it'll be. Can't. Yeah, I was gonna say can't. Haven't really. dug into Florida yeah, or Xavier yet. Into that, <laughs> that in detail. And then I think the championship game could be against either. I think we said Gonzaga, uh, more probably a Gonzaga or West Virginia or Purdue. I'm gonna say Gonzaga, and I'm gonna say that's going to be a loss. Mm. Um, we just know how good Gonzaga is early in the season. Um, and then we're gonna move on. You guys have Ohio State. In the ACC Big Ten Challenge. I'm going to give you all that win. That's at home. I think you guys always play good. Obviously, you're a lot better team at home. And I think you'll probably be, hopefully, full strength by then, rounding into the ACC play. Um, well, that's where the schedule gets weird. So it does I think get we weird. should talk about it. I we know it's these last it. few yeah. years. Not a fan of it. Yeah, the ACC starting games yeah. early December just seems yeah. odd to me. I know that's... Yeah, I know they're trying to fit in games and all that, but I, I just, I don't yeah. like it. I don't like how it was always after it was Christmas. Always, all it was just like, all right, it's go time. These games are these is this is it. This is like every game is you're playing for a championship here, and I don't like how they've sprinkled these. Obviously, they've added teams, and I think they're they've added more games clearly, but I'm not a fan. Um, I don't know how the coaching staff feels about it. Um, thankfully, I think Carolina plays like at Virginia Tech and has a home game against, I'm not quite sure, but you guys have Boston College and, uh, and then at Wake Forest at the end of December. Um, and then you got a, the Jimmy V Classic mixed in there up in New York against the Iowa team. I got y'all getting that win. Maryland Eastern Shore at home. I got y'all getting that win. And yeah, that's, that wraps it up. Never was a fan of those. Yeah, early December, like December eleventh, oh, the yeah. the exam time. Uh, the school games. campus is empty. Yeah, that was. You know, like you're there, but you're like, man, it'd be nice to be home. Is those are games that are tough. I mean, I, I'd imagine it's going to be a nice trip for y'all up to New York. Um, you know, we got to play when I was in school. We got to do the uh, Maui Invitational. We lost. So that was kind of. We won that. That was tough. My junior year. Yeah, that was tough. I was the MVP. You won a medal? I was the MVP. Hey, man. Put, damn, man. Put a little <laughs> MVP trophy on his uh, shirt, man. Uh, <laughs> All right. So what is that? I got y'all losing to Kansas. Then I got y'all losing in the championship of the Phil Knight Legacy to Gonzaga. So that's two L's. What's that end up is being? Nine and two. Yeah, nine and two. Nine and two non conference. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's not bad. Does, for y'all's roster, you does know, for Duke end up, you'll still be in the top ten. You think so? Uh, two yeah. losses, two uh, losses to rank the. Yeah, so that'll be two losses top, to rank teams top, ahead of us, right? Thank you, rank teams. Ahead Assuming of you, they they win out. Yeah, I think we said Gonzaga's two, Kansas is maybe. I think y'all are seven. They're yeah, six. seven. Yep. Yeah, like. Um, I hate to say it; those aren't bad L's. No, you know, especially for. Hopefully, you're you know by the end of that you're you know have your full team you know Whitehead is back as well. Um, yeah, I, I I think that would be in a good position. Yeah. I mean, I think the big the Kansas Whitehead yeah. being back or not is he's a big not, question. Uh, yeah. And if he's not back, yeah, yeah, you got that's going to be this, a very tough yeah, game. That's in two weeks. If he didn't play in the just off of you know getting your rhythm alone, that's going to be tough to be thrown into that kind of environment. And I agree with you. Lively, while super talented, yeah. is not necessarily a Gonna, go-to scorer yeah, not, right now. Yeah, um, sure. But yeah. you never know. Duke, like I said, Duke has the best record in yeah. the Champions Classic. So yeah. we're the best team 
of a group of yeah. champions every year. With Coach K at the helm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry about the start off. Only and, one. Yeah. And I think it the, the first champions team classic. To get kicked out of the champions <laughs> classic. Your membership has been revoked. And we're going to the fifth option, which is not UNC. <laughs> <We> will decline. <laughs> All right, let me let me take a look here. Let's look at this. We them UNC boys. <laughs> come on, man. Come on over. After surviving Johnson C. Smith in that Listen. 101 to 40 Listen. exhibition game. What? Ah, yeah, that's an interesting schedule. So you guys start out in state. Your your sister s- school. Sister school, come UNC Wilmington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which I'm sure will have a huge line on it. It's gonna be like 20 point. We're talking lines now. All no, right. not at all. Just, all I'm saying, already, no. all I'm saying is that game is going to be closer Did you? Okay. than you think. I'll let you finish. It's going to be closer than all you right. think. UNCW tournament aspirations this year. Good year last year. Okay. Bring everybody back. Add some transfer talent. Tough game. But I have you winning. <laughs> Thank you. Man. Uh, College of Charleston, Charleston, that's a W. Appreciate it. You're staying it. close to home. Gardner Webb, um, that's an easy W. James Madison, easy W. Um, so you're starting out 4 0 there. Yeah. Then you're hitting the Phil Knight Invitational. Um, like you said, both teams, which I didn't yeah. realize there were two of those. We at got first a little I confused. Were, at first, I thought they were. <laughs> we at first, I was confused. like, oh, we might play y'all. Like, how, would, how awesome would that be, though? It'd be pretty sweet. Um, it'd be very cool. So you guys play Portland, both in yeah. Portland at the same time. Yeah. Is that new? I don't know. We got to look that I up. Have no I, idea. I have no idea. I know That's they've always had that, that tournament out there at the Rose Garden, but I didn't know they had two going on at the same time. Yeah, right around the same yeah. dates. Um, then you would play Iowa State or Villanova. Yeah. If I was picking, I'd say Nova, but really? a new coach there. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm not saying to beat Carolina. I'm yeah, saying to play sure. Carolina. And I have Carolina beating Villanova. Yeah. But and that would scare me. If they still had Jay Wright, like that was scary. That would be a scary pre yeah, That would be a scary That would be a game. scary, scary But a good test game, at the same time. Yep. Yeah, um, Neutral court, NCAA tournament, like vibe. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what you'd want to be able to For play. Because sure. they play Thursday, Friday, Sunday yeah. of that week. I yeah. mean, that's even a little tougher. But sure. that back-to-back game is very yeah. – or just that two, uh, three and four days yeah. is a is a NCAA tournament like vibe. And then who we say you would have potentially in the championship was we said we thought maybe Michigan State. Yeah, that's who I would say. That was a that was yeah. our best guess. Um, who I would say you get a W as well. Yeah, tough, tough game though. That will be you tough and always Michigan physical. State, it's gonna be a tough. Yeah, game. always physical, high yeah. intensity. I pre- man, y'all got us winning the. T- Man, you a good man. I do, and then I have you turning around and losing at at Indiana. Yeah, tough environment, and Very I can tough. say from experience, when you go from winning a tournament, yeah, and then there's a relatively quick turnaround. You'd play Sunday, November twenty seventh. Maybe you fly back that night. Maybe you stay an extra Nine night. Nine o'clock start game. That oh, is you're a so you're setup. staying. You're staying an extra day. That's Yo, a n- setup. Yeah, Nine fifteen p.m. That is a set. Let's just hope they're so, trash. So that's like a ten fifteen. But they're they're trash. I think I got to do some. Re- we got to dive into that. Yeah, we're gonna have to dive into that when it comes around. But I got you taking that L because you get if you get home Monday and the twenty eighth. I played there. Time out. We played there. They yeah. were the number one team in the nation. I and think my either sophomore or junior year. What was the environment like? It was. It's like an old. It's like Hoosiers. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You're like you're looking up. It's like the crowd is on top of you. It was like tied at half. They're the number one team. We're like, oh, all right. You know, we in this. <laughs> Fam, that second half was a blur. It's like, <laughs> that was when Oladipo kind of oh, came yeah. out. Not, I mean, he didn't come out of nowhere, but, like, he had a monster year. Yep. Him, Cody Zeller. Yeah, Am Cody. I making that up? No, Cody Zeller. Cody yeah, Zeller Cody was Zeller yep. was there. Sheehy? Sheehy. Sheehy. Ba- he might have bodied somebody. It wasn't me. He might have bodied somebody <laughs> it that me. game. It, it wasn't me. me but he, you know? <laughs> Yeah, tough environment. Yeah, so I'm, and they're I'm, gonna be ready. I, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm not saying that they're yeah. a better team than you, no, no, but no, I'm no, saying but off a predicted tournament championship, late game, yeah, in Indiana, 
That's a setup game. They, that's that's yeah. a tough one. And that I can speak from experience because that's exactly yeah. what happened. We won the Maui Invitational. Yeah. We came home. That was even tougher because we had the time change. Is that the ACC Big Ten Challenge, though? That's ACC Big okay. Ten. Okay. I'm like, why would we even take that? But okay. That's why. You had to. You had to. So we played. We won the Maui yeah. my junior year. And then like three days later, so we had to fly time change yeah. back and – Two or three days later, we played at Ohio State yeah. and got drubbed. I yeah. mean, just destroyed. Yeah. Um, and it's just the high of a championship, yeah, even it's if it's tough. a preseason championship. So that's yeah. my prediction there. You got a couple we talked about. We'll get into ACC yeah. schedule later, um, Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. Then you go the Citadel, which is an easy W. Um and then a little bit of a interesting the CBS Sports Classic here, which we'll both have played by this time. Yeah. Ohio State will have a common opponent. That'll be um, a good. That'll be a nice test just to just see where to you guys. See where you know an early look yeah. into what each team would look like under a, against a similar opponent. Yeah. I have you winning that game. Um, and then the Jumpman Invitational, interestingly, in Charlotte, home game, which we played them at home last year, and that was probably our first signature win last year because they were good yeah they were well they were say, supposed to be good yeah. i think they At underperformed the time, they yeah. top 25 maybe yeah. top 15 um, um and i think that's going to be a good game but i have you guys winning yeah so what is that that is two three four five six seven one that is one. nine Ten and one. Ten and one. Is that right? Yeah, you got us taking one loss at Indiana. And we have eight and two on your side. So that probably drops you out of the number one. Because don't sure. you think? Well, we have a Gonzaga losing too. I don't know what Houston's preseason schedule looks like. Yeah. So you could stay at number one, losing a game in the yeah. But be you hard. Know, they you know they like to shift. They love the shift. Yeah, they they love as soon as you things. lose one, yeah. they're gonna go to that first undefeated team. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, and then a little more of a sneak peek. We do have our first two ACC games: Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech in the month of actually, and then we the very end of December we got Pittsburgh. So, um, a little preview. I think that Virginia Tech game at Virginia yeah, it could be, Tech. Yeah, not but easy although either. they did put us out of it, I think we'll handle them. They put us out of the AC tournament last year before they beat y'all for the championship. Yeah, so that was a rough. Yeah, week they had a good us. run. Yeah, they did. Um, so yeah, so that's where we're looking at. One loss for yeah. Carolina, two, yeah, for Duke, which is a great. I mean, it's it just shows you the ACC is going to be amazing this year. You know, there is going to be must-see TV every night when Carolina's on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Carolina sucks. Because that whole t- – I, honestly, I, you got us going 10-1. and one. I'm a homer. I got us maybe going undefeated this year, bro. I think we're going to have to – there's going to get to a point this season where we're going to be like, are these guys going to lose? But we'll see. I think a lot for Duke. I mean, we've already said it. Yeah. It depends on what yeah. and lively, yeah. being there, being healthy, being yeah. physically in shape, yeah. not just their injuries, but sure. having played. Yeah. Um, because the other freshmen, you know, Filipowski has a ton of talent. Yeah. A ton um, of talent. Mitchell's talented. Yeah. But I don't know that they're at that. You know, Duke yeah. in the past – has relied on those top three top picks. Three. You see like, Paolo. I mean, look yeah, at the season like, he's starting off with down with the Magic. I mean, they might not be winning, but the kid is – It's clear. It's the, clear. It's very clear. Um, I would say almost surprising. I didn't think he was going to be that good. When I saw him in person For sure. last I mean, year, I was like, he's so big yeah. and athletically NBA ready. gifted. Yeah. And with the spacing yeah. of the NBA um, – I would say just his ability to create for others surprised me because you didn't really see that at Duke. I didn't really see him. I mean, how many assists did he average? Maybe less than two. I bet you it was more than that. Really? Okay. I bet you it was yeah. more. But that was like he showed those little flashes, yeah. but he was a scorer. I mean, for he was sure. a scorer at Duke. He had and, to be. Yeah. And the way – I mean, the game is just a different game, college and, and NBA. And with all the spacing, the three-second in the lane yeah. and all that, he – He's able to attack, and when help comes over, it's a little more defined than, than in college, Way and more. he can make that pass. So, um, But, yeah, 
I don't know, unless yeah. Whitehead and Lively are healthy, those are the two yeah. guys who are and and let's be real, yeah. I don't think people have them as like top two guys in the no, draft. No, like no, no, they're no. not. There's no. t- there's that one level. They're both super talented, sure. but there's that one level above them yeah. that, you know, with yeah. RJ Barrett and Cam Reddish, those were top Gary five guys. Gary Trent Jr. Look at the look at when he was at Duke. Was he like compare him to maybe who who would he be on this Duke team? On this team, you know, I mean, he didn't, his role was different than it sure. is what he is now. For sure, he was just like but an explosive like, shooter for at sure. Duke. And yeah. I think if you're you're hoping yeah. that the kid like Grandison, Grandison, can take I don't that. think he's the same, but like he's yeah. Yeah. A capable shooter has shown capable. it at a college. If you guys can level knock down shots, it's, it, y'all are gonna be a very scary team with the athleticism that y'all have. And the, obviously, we've talked about Roach at length. You know, just his veteran leadership. This is this was a Final Four team. You know, y'all did y'all had a shot to play for the national championship last year. Shout out to Caleb Love for ending that. I was there. You were there. I remember. Yeah, <laughs> but no, there the talent yeah, is the talent is there. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they said the same thing about Carolina last year. You know, and it took it took considerable amount of time. You know, for them to get in stride. We've said this and I'll say it again. That they were an eight seed going into the tournament. You know, that, that got hot and, you know, now they're the number one team. I think, you know, there will be some ups and downs definitely from Duke this year. But it's gonna be hard to I mean, I'm a Carolina fan. It's gonna be hard to bet against them just with that sheer amount of talent. You know, and I would imagine like you said, Shire and the coaches there will figure out a way to get the best out of them. Yeah, well it, that'll be I mean, there'll be so much pressure yeah. in terms yeah. of, you know, John, I think is very cool under pressure as a player, as yeah. a coach. I don't yeah. have concerns there, but um, what Hubert did with Carolina yeah. last year in his first year yeah. is relatively unheard of to take a yeah. team. And obviously you're starting at a, at a place like Duke or Carolina, right, you're, you're starting in start, a great place. Yeah. But when you take over, you don't know yeah. – how that's going to go you Who's have to stay. there's a learning curve yeah there's a big difference between an assistant coach's role Self and expectations sure. and yeah. management skills of an organization yeah. um and let's be real it's not just a team that you're you're not just coaching the players right. you're you're managing i mean while i'm sure john isn't dealing with every single nil For thing sure. that's coming through or yeah. you, but you're having to manage a whole yeah. nother level these guys are pulling up in yeah <laughs> yo you got the, 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 the g-wagon <laughs> the, the <laughs> g-wagon like, what you got over there, coach? The camera, oh yeah. that's cute <laughs> exactly it's different man it's extremely different yeah um, when you saw an opponent Wearing Gucci yeah. shades and like, shoes, oh, yeah. you thought something was going wrong or now, against the rules. Yeah. Uh, now it's Not like, so much oh, now. yeah, that's just the way it goes. Speaking of first year head coach, man, I just want to talk about a little bit of my experience. You know, we talked about this before we got on, just playing for Coach Kerr. You know, I was blessed to be able to play um, for the Warriors for three years, got to the finals three years in a row. Uh, which was cool. Like, all of that was awesome. But, you know, some of the fondest memories I have are just going undrafted and going to Summer League in which Steve Kerr, that was his first time coaching. A lot of people don't know that. I mean, obviously it's not, like, common knowledge, but Steve came and coached the Summer League team. Like, he – which is unheard of. You never see – for sure, you know, coaches that have been in the league, you know, for – a while they're not coming down to coach the summer league team, but Steve used it as an opportunity, of course, I mean smartly so, to you know just put in his um, philosophies and um, I was there from day one. It was just so awesome, you know, being undrafted, going to summer league, fighting for that you know roster spot, not even roster spot, just fighting for an opportunity to go to training camp. Um, I look back on that and it was just that was more or less the reason I feel like I was able to get into the league because, you know, when we were doing summer league, I was going to the gym early. I was staying late. I was getting an opportunity to make an impression on the head coach, you know, whereas a lot of times you're making an impression on maybe like the third, fourth assistant, you know. A lot of times you don't even see the 
front of the bench guys, you know, coaching these summer league teams. And, you know, to go from summer league to training camp where I ended up getting cut, then going down to the G League, playing in the G League for like two months. You know, Coach Kerr even stayed in touch with me, which was crazy. Just just speaking on the type of human being he was. Um, So humble, so personable. You know, the ultimate players coach. The ultimate players coach. And, you know, inevitably getting called up, getting signed halfway through the year and then going on to win an NBA championship um, with that team. And just going from watching that team from afar under Mark Jackson and just seeing, you know, obviously I wasn't in-house at the time, but just seeing the changes that Coach Kerr made and just I'd imagine they were just very, you know, he didn't come in there and just, you know, totally – you know, wipe a clean slate. Like, I'm assuming Hubert and Shire are not going to come in there and be like, hey, listen, all that stuff, Roy, all that stuff Coach K we're talking about, that's out the window. Just to see the the minute changes that he made in the offense and obviously the roster changed a little bit. Um, and just to see what that has become has just been, you know, it's been, it's a blessing, man, just to be able to like, hey, I was there at day one, day zero, when Coach Kerr walked in to, you know, East Las Vegas High School. It was like, all right, this is what we're running, you know, That's with pretty. his staff, Alvin Gentry and Luke Walton and, you know, later on Willie Green. I mean, his coaching tree is kind of – it's crazy, man. Um, would you – the answer can be no, but would you say that is, like, your most proud basketball moment going from from non-drafted, yeah. getting cut, yeah, like, and, and finding a way – Proud. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, just like finding a way, you know, like yeah. not giving up, you know, to go from like, you know, McDonald's All American to having a more or less disappointing career at Carolina, you know, and then not getting drafted, but finding a way, you know, not giving up on my dream, you know, to play in the association and um, not getting drafted and then getting cut, you know, and then getting called up and then like, on top of all that, winning an NBA championship my rookie year, like being in uniform at, you know, Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, you know, turning around to my parents as the um, clock hit triple zero and just being like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> like, you can't even make this up, you know. Shout out to God, man. He's amazing just for blessing me with that opportunity. That he is. I, I look back and crazy. go, you know, you've always worked hard. It's not sure. like you've been working hard since you were – Learn to love the game. Thank I mean, we, we all have. Yeah. Um, but there's there I think that extra little something yeah. when you're when you're it's on the line. Yeah. And as a pro, you're it's your livelihood. I mean, yeah. you know, obviously we love playing, but also, you know, you gotta make money. You yeah. gotta pay these bills. You know, yeah. I was I was married and had a kid by the time I was in my third year, yeah. second second, third year, yeah. Um and I had a. It was awesome to have the experience of being drafted yeah. in the second round, and obviously those were all proud moments. My sure. college career, one national champ. There's a ton of proud moments. Yeah. But I actually look back, and one of my, I think my proudest moment memory of that time was after playing three years with the Lakers. My third year, I didn't really play at all, yeah. and I basically had nowhere. I mean, yeah. no no team had very much interest and got a my agent got a call from Atlanta yeah. to come play pick up like yeah. in in end of August and um to show you how little interest I had I, they they had 16 guaranteed contracts I yeah. mean they, I was and I, they invited me to camp yeah. which I played was one well. more than the team yeah, yeah. The, the team could carry at that time 15 yeah. and a lot of teams didn't even want to carry 15 they uh-huh. wanted 14 yeah. so that they yep. had some flexibility flexibility to to make trades or whatever and to go to training camp and i played well in those pickup games yeah. in august they invited me to training camp um coach bud budenholzer um who's a great coach yeah. and I, we've seen it now that he's For won sure. championship with the the bucks and yeah. and clearly is a you know brilliant coach um he liked me yeah. and i played really hard and i tried i fit into his his system and style and at that time, he had player personnel power. And, I mean, I hadn't ever met him before yeah. going to – and, again, I hadn't really played – I really hadn't played in almost two seasons because yeah. 
the, my second year in the, with the Lakers, I was almost exclusively playing the small forward, yeah. which is not ideal in the yeah. NBA for me and my I lateral think I saw movement. Like the, <laughs> this is off topic, but like the last time the Lakers started 0-5, there was like a picture. I'm, right I'm like, <laughs> wait, this roster was Ryan playing your three, man. Like, what are y'all doing to my guy? Not only the three, but then they'd go, who's the better offensive player? Let's put Ryan yeah, on. I'm like, they did my man a huge disservice yeah. here, but I was neither here nor there. Lateral quickness, not my strength. <laughs> um, never was, never will be. Um, but I, I, what they ended up doing was cutting two fully guaranteed uh, spots. Never happens. Yeah, that, that doesn't happen. They paid, fully paid two players. Yeah. Um, one was injured, Jared Jack. Okay. Um, but still, though. he was not, I mean, I'm sure he was not happy. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you get all your money, uh -huh. um, and then Eddie Tavares, who now plays yeah. over in Real Madrid in Euroleague, and has had a yeah for sure great career. And that's not to say I'm a better player than them. Oh, I, I, that's the league. But that's the way the league goes. That's and the league. That moment where it was like it was it. over. Yeah. And then to get that yeah. shot, and basically that whole year, Bud told me you're not playing. Yeah, but <laughs> he was just like, I think you're gonna. And then things changed, and that's a whole another yeah, story like, for yeah. another day. Um, but those proud, yeah. those full of pride in that, and you're you're yeah. fighting not for your just for yeah. yourself and your love of the game, but also your family, yeah. your livelihood. Um, Back against the wall. Yeah. So, and there's tons of stories yeah. that, that we can tell, um, and we'll get to throughout this this pod. And uh, yeah, I hope hope everybody enjoyed um, this little conversation, uh, episode one of the pod. Um, a lot Some more good stuff. Yeah, a lot yeah. more content coming y'all's way. Please be patient with us. You know, this is our first time on the other side of the mic. Um, and we're setting this. We got we got our, our man, David Dismay, helping us yes. out, producing for us. But uh, we're Amazing. setting all this stuff up in our little Japanese apartment yeah. um, or Max apartment. And uh, I'd go I'd, – I'd be remiss in, in not saying that – I think in episode zero in the intro pod, we talked about how we have all the time in the world. That's not really true. That's we got, true, we, we don't have that much time. Yeah. We have kids. Yeah. So, um, yeah. we're going to do our best to get these pods out to yeah. you guys. Um, you know, we enjoy doing them and, uh, we'll yeah. see you soon. Yeah. We're on all platforms. The better blue, obviously Ryan Kelly, 34 on Instagram and Twitter, James McAdoo, Instagram and Twitter. We'll have a mailbag set up. Please reach out to us. And we look forward just to going through this season with y'all. So, see you. Peace.